the results you're getting or just the decisions you made, whether you made good decisions or not, but just, you know, accept them and then now take a path forward. We have to be willing to be authentic and be vulnerable and be around people that we know will give us good advice. I want to have more money or make more money or have more passive income. Well, specifically how much and by when. See, without those in place, it's just a, you know, pipe dream. You need to honor the past. Always honor the past, but don't let the past persevere. Don't let it hold you up. I used to work on a trading desk for a lot of years. Well, a trading desk is, is, it can be a boiler room, right? And so if something's happening in your life and somebody calls you and you get some sort of call that's about something tense or whatever, people would just sort of turn their head and observe one another's privacy and stop listening as an act of respect, right? There, there is a, a privacy that we maintain within this community that that what is inside doesn't go outside so that you guys can feel safe talking about the icky things in your life so that you can get solves in those areas where you've been snagged. And that's when you start to get real breakouts, real breakout performances. So you have to trust the process in this. And, and what we do in the masterminds, and this is for more of the new people, you know, what we do in the blueprint days, it's about actually tackling some of the tough stuff that you don't want to talk about. And that when you do bring it up, you might get some rather bracing feedback, especially for me, because I have a tendency to think that everything is a nail and I'm a hammer. Kind of raised that way. <laughs> and, um, but I'm blunt. And if you know me, you know that I'm really direct. I'm painfully direct, okay? But not hateful. I'm not mean. I just will tell you, hey, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. You have a limiting belief there, or you've got a wrong idea there, or you're looking at that in a way that's going to not give you the result that you want. Mike Abernathy's great at that. He's kind about it, but he will tell you when something doesn't work. And so that's, that's the power of the room to get what he's talking about, you know, to get those kinds of results. And, and you have to use the room that way. If you don't, you will get what you get. Yeah, speaking of Mike Abernathy, back when I was going through my flip-flop practice sale, or boomerang sale, I guess. I sold it once and it came back and I had to catch it, but it was kind of screwed up. And I, 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 was, I was feeling very, um, well, I was frustrated. You know, I went through all the emotions, right? Frustrated and angry, but you know, really, really what Mike, Mike said is like, you know, David, you just gotta look at yourself. I mean, it's not putting me down. It's just like, David, the results you're getting are just you know, decisions you made, whether you made good decisions or not, but just you know, accept them and then, and then now let's take a path forward, right? And uh, you know, he's absolutely right. It's just, we have to look to ourselves, but how, again, how do we grow? How, how are we authentic to Kansas Point? Uh, we have to be willing to, to be authentic and be vulnerable and be around people that we know will give us good advice and That's not true. judging because we're all the same. We're all the same people. I don't, I don't care who's climbed the highest mountain and looks like they're every, everything. Um, you get behind the curtains and if they're authentic, they'll tell you about all of the, the um, the baggage behind, you know, that, that's there. It's, it's just part of life, and yet society you know, holds us up to where we have to be, like, perfect. We have to look perfect and be the part. And, it and just none of you does, are. It doesn't hold true. It doesn't hold true. It's okay. So we can let that guard down and then just realize where you're in a, a room with, you know, you're, you're, you're here because you all want to grow. I mean, I mean none, of you, none of you has to be here. I mean, this is not a CE requirement to keep your license to be here this weekend. Is it? No, it's not. I mean, no one forced you to be here. You don't have to be here. You could be living your life, but you're here for a reason. You're here because you do want something different. You do want some change. It's, everybody's got some different, but there's always some internal conflict because we want more, yet without knowing what, what more looks like, then we just stay on that, that treadmill. So getting specificity and doing that with a peer group where we can really dig in and kind of ping from each other and, and, and see and reflect from each other to me, that's been the biggest growth for me. Mentors and then being around people that can help me, help reflect back on me. Um, like, put a, put a mirror in my face. Again, not, not, to, be, not to beat me, myself up, so as, as James Miller talked about yesterday. The wins, the wins, the wins. You've got to always be looking at your wins because you all have wins. But if you want to live a different life, then we've got to be reflective and say, well, then, then what areas are missing? What limiting beliefs do I have that I've encompassed over the years that are holding me back? What, what, what brain trash, head trash do I need to remove um, to make that happen? You know, and, and not, I mean, Mike Dostal was just, just one of, of, of all of us who, you know, went through some tough times. I've been through them too. And really it's having people around me that help get me centered. And if I wasn't asking the right questions, they would ask me questions and, you know, help me start to discern where I was not being forthright with myself and not making those good decisions. So it comes back down again to having clarity and specificity about 
what you, what you want and what you don't want. But we can't generalize. We can't generalize about, well, I just, I want more time. Without specificity, that, without specificity, that will not happen. I want to be in better health or I want to lose weight or what. Where's the specificity, right? Setting the milestones. You may not hit all of them, but at least you, you have milestones. I want to have more money or make more money or have more passive income, which would be the, the, the better term what we look at. Well, specifically how much and by when. See, without those in place, it's just a you know, pipe dream. And that's why so many hardworking people, high income people, um, stay on a treadmill. You start to get the specificity, reverse engineer, and then if you start showing up, have a place to show up, a peer group to show up, mentors, people you show up with, Jim, I know you, you've got people you work with in all dimensions of your life, right? I mean, you've got people that are there for you and, and, and keeps you, keeps you, keeps you in, in step. Um, and that's the way you live your life. And that's what you're sharing with your, with, with, with your family and, and, and all the people that you share 18 summers with. I mean, it's, but it's through your own version of your life that you develop this opportunity to not only serve you know, yourself in a better way, but to serve other people. And every one of us can do that, reaching that higher purpose in life. Jim, Jim's an awesome entrepreneur, has, 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 has the great biggest heart, uh, and he loves real estate, and he's done does that really, really well. But there's more, isn't there? There's more. The real estate's cool, and it's a vehicle to allow you to do what you do and give you the freedom to, to have these other influences, but that's the bigger part of who you are. Um, actually, when we talk, we, we don't talk much about real estate at all, ever do we? It's, it's always other stuff, which is cool. Which is cool, I mean, right? You know, I mean, real estate's fun and that's great, but it's like when you can start talking about the other stuff, that, that's where life, life gets to be fun. That's, 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 that's what I enjoy about this group. That's what, that's what gets me to, to want to do this because I enjoy being with you all. I, I get energy from you. Um, this doesn't suck my energy at all. I, just, I can run this way for a long time before I think I you know, fall over. Now put me back in the dental office. <laughs> I don't know if I last a week. <laughs> uh, that was hard work. I, I mean, I'm not regretting it. It was hard work. Um, I wasn't built to carry out the, the, the fine-tuned detail. I could do it, but it was hard. But I didn't know anything different. No one ever showed me there was different ways I could have even run my practice today, which many of you are figuring out. Yeah, there's different ways. Hiru has figured out this last year that where a year ago she, she, she wanted to exit, right? Right, Sumit? It's like, like, like Sumit. Like Sumit told us at our Blueprint Day, you know, I don't, I don't get dentists, you know. They, they seem like there's this, always this end point. Like they're hard charging for retirement day and then there's an end point. And Sumit's like, what is that all about, right? It's like, well, it's just in our heads. Now Hiru's, after, after redeveloping, you know, her mindset, her game plan, you know, you talk to her. She, she loves the practice now because she's reinvented herself and reinvented the practice in a way where, there doesn't have to be an end point, does there? I mean, you get to decide, or, or it's more of a transition, it's more of a, a reinvestment, it's more of an involvement. And that only happens when we have other people kind of put a mirror in front of our face, and what do you really want? Well, I don't like the, the way I'm doing it this way, so how could, we, how could we morph that or move that to something you do like? Well, it, takes, it means taking some risk, doesn't it? It means taking a chance. And maybe the first time you try something, it, like Babe Ruth, it doesn't work out, you strike out a few times. It's okay. It's okay. You've got to take some risk to, to get forward movement. With, with change, change requires some loss. It requires some giving up of something, doesn't it? I mean, that's what change is. That's why we don't like change, because we don't want to give something up. So change requires some loss. Loss is going to require some pain. I mean, it does. It does. If you're going to give something up that in your mind or that you thought was important to get something that you believe will be better, there's going to be some pain. And and with pain comes, comes grieving. I mean, seriously, when you give something up on some level, there's some internal grief. I don't mean sobbing of tears, but I mean, there's, there's, there's that pain of that giving that, that loss. And when you're making changes with your environment, with your, your team and what you wanna do, there's gonna be some, some removal of some things you're doing and it might be removal of some people. I mean, you have to go through it, it's hard. Because we, typically, we all love people and we don't want to upset people. We don't like conflict. But you have to be able to willing to go through that. Three some years ago, we made some decisions with Freedom Founders we, that were hard to make. A lot of you were with us during that time. It was, we made some changes in the direction we want to go, how we want to serve to improve 
what we felt like would be the outcomes. I don't have to go into details here. I'll just tell you we made some tough decisions. And that meant we lost some people. Some, some of my, my, my friends said, David, are you going to be okay when John and Jane, who have been a part of this group, are no longer a part of this group? That, that's a grieving process. It is hard because we want to help everybody, don't we? We really want to help everybody. But we had to make some, some decisions. There's some grief that goes along with that. Your team has got to, got to buy in, but also you have to allow your team, the people that, that you've built to collaborate with you, you've got to allow them to go through, through that process too. Now, on the other side, grieving does not mean it's going to stop your own momentum. It does not stop momentum. You can, you, you need to honor the past. Always honor the past, but don't let the past persevere. Honor, honor what you've gone through. Honor what you've, what you've developed, but don't let it hold you, hold you up. All right, that concludes the first half of the presentation I did with Candace. We'll step up next week and start out with Candace talking about different perspectives of time and how much is enough and what does free for life really mean and some particular case studies within our group. I think you'll find it very interesting. I'll see you next week.